Um, maybe. Good evening. Good evening and welcome. Welcome to the shop here in Canterbury, New Hampshire. Thank you for choosing this channel and not your town hall argumentative station. <laughs> we got lots of time for that later. But tonight, I want to talk about being square, getting square, making squares, and knowing when you're square. Do you know when you're square? <laughs> Do you know, well, I guess the one who's really got square doesn't know, is the last to know. But I want to show you some tips to working with squares and actually making your own in a pinch. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tom McLaughlin. This is Epic Woodworking, where together in the shop, we get to the heart of woodworking with the camera lady doing her thing behind that bright light in my face. <laughs> and she is amazing. She multitasks. She will text and actually read your questions later. So I look forward to answering those. But um, if, you have, uh, if you enjoy this content, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell and share and like and all that. Thank you for being here tonight and spending some time with me in the shop. Oh. I got to check out one thing. Oh, camera lady? Yes. You weren't paying attention. I was going to. I'm going to check out one thing over here for a second. All right. <laughs> oh, get it. Yes, here it comes. What? It's the B square. <laughs> the B square. And that you are. All right. Oh my gosh. Oh, All right. Lord. Too appropriate. Okay. That is credit to Huey Lewis and the News. Some of you know that song. It's hip to be square. Embrace it. Embrace it. And it's good to be square and know when you're square. You know, I was digging out some squares today and I was a little embarrassed how many I have, and I didn't even go to the other stash. So I'm going to just show you a few of them that I've got here. Now, I've got this, uh, this Freud model. This is one of the earlier ones, I think. I don't remember when I picked it up, but it's been in the drawer, not doing a whole lot, and I'm not sure how reliable it is. This is one I picked up at a flea market. It's got a nice brass, um, what do they call this part? Um, this is the blade, I think. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it's the part that goes against the work. You know what I'm talking about. The other straight part. <laughs> I should have brushed up on all my terms before tonight, but you know that thing. And anyway, this is going to give us square. And this one has some sentimental value to me because I actually gave this to Pug Moore as a gift back in 91, I think, when I was at the shop with him. And I gave him a Christmas gift and I, I knew he didn't have like a really fine square. So I gave this to him. And you're probably wondering, why do you have it then? <laughs> well, uh, he ended up about Five or six years later, he started getting macular degeneration where you can't see in the center and it became really difficult. And then sadly, he had to close up the shop. So um, he gave me some tools and lots of patterns and things from the shop that I've talked about before. But this was one of the things. <laughs> so he kind of gave it back to me. And I was doing some checking with it. You know, I've, I've tried using it over the years, and what's really funny is it's not square. It, if you test a square, like the, one of the best ways to test square, let me get a board here. I'll show you. Ugh. All right, so I've got a nice a piece of MDF here, and you might have to come in. Okay. And 
if I have a true straight edge here, I can check my square by just setting it right against that edge. And let's, let's extend this so that I can really check. So I'm going to, this is true and straight, this straight edge. So I'm going to use this to go all the way across here. So this is like um, 18 inches across. So there's my, my line, all right? Now I'm going to flip it the other way and check it for square. This is the same principle that we used when we did our three cut. Son of a gun, that looks pretty good actually. <laughs> no, it's not perfect. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. But it's a little off and it's already bugged me. See, I'm right on the line up here. As I get down here, I'm a little inside. See, I'm close, and then it gets further apart down here. So it's a little this way. And I suppose I could file it and tr true it up, but I don't know. I get to thinking. Gosh, that's pretty close. <laughs> but it's not square. You see things, if you do. No. <laughs> Now listen. <laughs> that, was, that, meant, that was meant to be. An, an no, hour. no, I know, I know. I'm just saying, square does not lie. It's like the truth, and you gotta know square when you're building furniture. So many things reference from it. You might feel like you're square, and this isn't meant at you, Miss Camera Lady. The um, piece is called the stock, the blade and stock. Thank you, Cam. Thank you, Cam. Now we know what we're doing. The stock goes against the stock and the blade, blade, right? I did get that right, yeah. I think. <clears throat> All right, so what I was saying was square is like the truth. There's only one square. You're either square or you're not. You can feel like you're square. but <laughs> So how square is square? Well, if you remember back when we made that three cut method cross cut sled, we got it down to like, it was like a thousandth of an inch over 48 inch cut when you added up the two cuts. And if you, I'm, I'm going to reference that sled and the reason why I'm gonna reference that tonight is because the square that I'm gonna show you how you can make, you don't even need to have a square to get to know you're absolutely square by making that three cut method cross cut sled first. So I'm going to use pieces that I cut from that to show you how to reference and know your square. So we'll link to that as well, right? In the, what do you call it? The, the three. Uh, the notes? I always want to call it the notes. Oh, description. The description underneath that little arrowy thing. And, and there are links already to most of the squares Tom is going to show you. Today. Right. Now, one of my favorite squares that you can know and believe and trust at Square is this Sterrett model here. And I've mentioned this in my top 10 favorite tools. These are, these are really essential to do fine work and to check out what's square. So this is a great one because you can change it up. It can get you 45, which I rarely use. Um, but it's nice to have this movable blade in the stock. So there you go. Starrett is a beautiful square. When I bought mine, it, they were $65, which seemed like a lot of money. Now I think they're over 100. Is that true? Somebody knows. Someone check on that. The other one I love is this little guy, this little four inch model. And it's a, um, I don't even see a brand on it, but I got it at Woodcraft. I don't know why there's no brand name on it. Um, somebody might know what it is, but it's, it's blue. I don't know if they still have this exact model, but the nice ones really travel great. We've, we'll link to, uh, to this, but we also have linked to another one. Oh, I'm, thinking, I'm forgetting the name of it. Eye Gauge. Eye Gauge, thank you. Wow. She's on top of her tools. <laughs> <laughs> you 
You've been looking at the tools, the calendar, catalog lately? I have a record, (coughs) a log of the links that we've used before, and that was one I was... Amazing. Well, we've we've had mixed reviews on the eye gauge. Um, It's obviously a less expensive model. It's an imported, and as such, it seems like there's always little things that are quirky about the tightening knob and the sliding and how just the action of it and how good it, you feel about it. <laughs> Which is funny because you do get a feeling about using certain tools. And that feeling can be very reaffirming when you're using a fine tool. That's why I often say, I have never regretted paying too much for a tool because every time you use something that's nice, it's, it gives you feedback that makes you feel like you you're pretty good at what you're doing. <laughs> you know, I don't know why that is, but it's reassuring and you, you're like, yeah, I got this. I got my fine tool, right? So sometimes we have fine tools before we really know what we're doing to, all together with them. But that's okay. You'll grow into them. But you might want to start with handmade tools, like I'm going to show you tonight. <laughs> you don't need a square square. But if I was going to start with one square, it'd be the fundamental combination square. And then you can add squares like this. And I have recently been very impressed and turned into a woodpecker fan. Woodpeckers um, has sent me some squares that I've tried out. And what you saw on the crosscut sled, I use an 18 inch square. And it's amazing. I mean, it's like, it's a version like this one. This is their 12 inch and it's aluminum and it has a really, it gives you that, that rear, that affirming feeling like that you're going to do something really scary good when you take this square. So check this out. I'll just give this the test. Well, let's do it with the, in fairness, with the knife on here. What's that? really give them a close-up of the combination before so I just took a picture. I mean I can see that this is dead on right all the way so anyway that pencil line sits right on top of the other pencil line so it's different we're wide here and then these other little guys this is so nice to use to I like using this on the joiner Um, you can check your fence and you also can check the alignment of a bandsaw blade. You can flip it this way. And they're chunky, so they, they sit really great. They're, they're pricey, though, you know? So I get it, you know? I, I take, you know, I, I spring for some nice tools, but it's, it's totally up to you and what's in your budget and what you can do. Um, this is a new thing they sent that I was just checking out. It's the steel one. And it's got all these little registers in here, which cracked me up because I started checking them. Come in here close. If you you take it like at a half inch, you can just put your pencil right in at a half inch and holding it against the, the side. That line is dead on a half inch from that edge. I mean, if you wanna go 7 16 you come over to this side here and you just pull the line. Go to three eighths. I know, it's crazy. And you go to a quarter. No, I'm sorry, that's five sixteenths. Then this is a quarter. Isn't that crazy? So every one of those is so dead on a sixteenth apart. So you can do that all the way out. You want to pull a quick line like that. You don't have to set this and do like the double move like I've often done with this. If I set it on a half, See, if I set this one right on a half, and then I, this is what I'm always doing, is put my pencil on the outside like this. Technically, I'm a little over half right here. So if you're fussy and you want that kind of accuracy, these are pretty cool. Anyway, it's not a commercial for Woodpecker. It's just, they're, they're nice, and they're, I think they're making some of the nicest squares out there now. But uh, totally up to you to see what you want to shop around for. Um, but I am uh, going to set this aside. 
And I want to show you a few squares that I've made myself. Now, this is technically a T-square that I made a while ago for my full-size drawings. If you've ever bought a full-size drawing for me, this is the square that I use to make the lines. It's like, look how cheap that is, right? You don't need fancy tools, I'm telling you. I got like a 3 8 piece of Baltic plywood. 3 8 I don't even know what I mean. But it is. It's, well, it's almost. It's uh, 5 16 strong. I forget how many millimeters that is. Somebody knows, right? And it's long. I mean, it's almost four feet. It is four feet. And I've got a piece of mahogany here on this end that has stayed very true. And this is almost dead on. You know what? It's not perfect. <laughs> and I have to mess around with it a little sometimes. But it's great. And it's getting a little worn. I've got some bumps on it. So if you see a little, like, jog in the line, on your drawings, it's because maybe this little bump right here. <laughs> I don't know. But it's real, you know, it's personal. So I'm gonna put this back. I like keeping that right there. And then I got hand touched. Yeah. I got this square. What? <laughs> this could also be used <laughs> for Halloween. Listen, partner. So this square, this is really fine. I actually made this one when I was putting in the cabinet, the drawer runners in my kitchen cabinets. So that was 1998. And I kept it upstairs because I never know when I'm going to need it. And look, I'm using it now. <laughs> I don't think I've used it since. Thank God. Maybe once or twice. <laughs> so let's check that for square. Let's use the woodpecker and check this one out. I don't know how good it is, but so I'm looking. Look at that. That's not bad for being up in the attic and being how old? I don't know. So you can make funky little squares with some plywood like this, and then I shot some brad nails in there, and this is like a piece of quarter inch plywood, not even straight, but it stayed true, and it was good for putting in. Drawer runners. So, uh, let me set that aside. They're sharing a lot of good uh, tips about squares they have. That's great, you guys. Good. All right, so, um, but check this out. I love that. Pug gave me this, too. Like, he collected old stuff. He had, like, an antique room. And I have this in my office up on a shelf. And it's just more decorative than anything. But this is a little T-square that someone made years ago. It has screws in it, but the, they're old screws. They're not machined. They're, the, they're made the uh, old way. You can tell because the slots are off-center. And, and as you sight this thing, one edge is pretty good. The other edge is kind of wacky. So I got the feeling that they were mainly using off one edge, or it's just gone off over time. But I want you to notice something about this little square and that's the kind of wood grain that they used for it if you look on the top you can see this linear grain running the length and it's one after another and they're about an eighth of an inch apart well that grain is hold it still hun, please okay. that is either rift or quarter sawn you can actually see some flecking coming out on the surface so this is an oak and it's quarter sawn. It's probably white oak. I'm going to flip it over. Yeah, so you can see more flecking on this side. So we're looking at quarter sawn oak. So quarter sawn is a great choice because it's the most stable cut of wood. It's least likely to warp out on you and to get out of flat. I mean, this has stayed pretty darn good. I mean, this thing is probably 100 years old, at least anyway. And it's got a lot of wear on it, a lot of character. And then it's got this little stock up here. Or is it the head of a T-square? I don't know. Is it stock? Or is it that? And it's got a cool little groove cut right there at the top of it. And that would be so that no kind of debris gets stuck between these two and throws you off. So you've got that little relief spot to keep it clean 
and reference accurately. Now, I would never use this one, but it has inspired me to make one like it. I'm not going to do that tonight, but I will talk a little bit about my approach for that. All right, so let's get into making one, um, or a couple of them. Now, I want to show you what I've done to get ready for this. All I did was take a piece of MDF. It's three-quarter inch. It happens to be the heavy stuff. And I jointed this one edge. So I got this edge just dead straight. Then I used my three-cut method cross-cut sled and set the depth to about three-eighths of an inch. A little shy. Maybe, maybe five-sixteenths heavy, like 30 seconds. <laughs> Let me check that with one of my little squares. Um, yes, it's a little over 5 sixteenths. So then, so I just referenced with this straight edge on that fence, put it right here, and then made a cross cut. So I know that groove is as close to square as my cross cut sled could be set up to cut across here. So that, then after I ran that groove, I just ran a piece of stock, a quarter inch piece of cherry, and I ran it through the uh, drum sander a couple times after I ripped it on the table saw, and then I put a little glue in there and glued it into the slot. I mean, it was rigidly in there. So now I have this kind of little beam that's registering in that groove, which I know is dead square to this edge. So I can actually check it with a square that I know is dead on. And look how accurate that is. Boom. And then same thing on this side. It's really nice. Let's check my one of them, not that. It looks pretty good, actually. Let's check. Maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought. Or else, maybe it's this side. Yeah, it's a little, little wanky. But you know, it's pretty close. Maybe Pug never noticed. I don't know. He wasn't as nerdy, I think, as me with some of this stuff. So, anyway. Square. Excuse me? I said you mean square. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he wasn't so square about being square. So, anyway, I am going to now make, uh, let's make a few little squares that we know are going to register and be good. Now, what are we going to use for material? Check it out. I've got this, this heart pine. Look at that grain at the end of this. That's a con considered rift sawn because the, the grain is running at, if it's between um, 30 and 60 degrees, it's considered rift. If it's zero to 30, it's considered quarter. I mean, that might be even quarter. It's very close, but I think it's just over 30. So we're looking at rift. But what it gives you is that same linear quality on the surface. Now this is yellow pine or heart, or um, they also call it heart pine. From, and this is from, this is from Alabama, I believe. Yeah, it's like, it's like printed into it. It's old flooring. And it's E.E. E. Jackson Lumber Company. Some of you may have heard of that. I actually looked it up on the internet. Shoot, I can't. Oh, here we go. I want to get you the, where it is. It's uh, Ritterwood, Alabama. Does anyone know where that is? Somebody must live down there. Is that, am I saying that right? Yeah, Ritterwood, Alabama. I looked it up on the internet. It's a pretty amazing story um, about this guy, E.E. E. Jackson, who became governor of some state later. But they had a, a huge stand of southern yellow pine down there. And they started milling it. He set up the operation in uh, the mid-1800s. So just after the Civil War, they were booming. It was 1870 they were really cranking out a lot of flooring. And it was all, uh, all this hard pine. The stands had to have been old growth, because check this one out. 
This is a quarter sawn one, and those lines are running perpendicular to the surface. Now, how did I get this? Well, it's my opportunistic ways. Some of you, or maybe, <laughs> I was driving one morning in Wilson, North Carolina, and I would go up my little road, Weaver Road, and I would take a right, these back roads, to get to the main, um, what was it, 301? Highway 301. It wasn't really a highway, <laughs> but it went between Wilson and Rocky Mount. Well, as I made that right, I noticed one day that this old farmhouse that was on the left had been demolished, and it was laying there in a pile of debris. So they were clearly just coming to scoop it up and trash it. So, spotting an opportunity, <laughs> I thought maybe there's something there that I could pick up and save for when I really need it. Did you Don't know I did that? Don't you mean steal? No, it wasn't <laughs> stealing. It was, no, seriously, it was, they, were, they were going, it was going to the dump. Did you, did you know I, I did that? No, I never knew that. All right. Well, I didn't get a whole lot. I wonder why you wouldn't have told me. <laughs> That's going to surprise you. I know it would have meant a lot to you one day. Well, so I went up and I grabbed some of the jaggedy sticks like that were in the pile. And they were, they had just like bulldozed the flooring. And a lot of it was splintered. But I got some, probably about 20 pieces that were, you know, so long. And it was this. But I did it because when I saw it, I'm like, wow, look at that stuff. It is, it's a little over an inch thick. It's milled, tongue and groove. Can you so, hold that down? We didn't get to see the very well. It's a little over an inch thick. And it's milled, tongue and groove. Wow. So they were using just this over the floor joists in those old farmhouses. They didn't have the worry about, it did get cold in the winter some, but... In North Carolina, you know, they would put the joists, and then they would put, there was no subfloor. This went right across the joists. It was sturdy and strong. And with this quarter sawn, and it had to be old growth. If you look how close those growth rings are, there's probably at least 20 per inch, because they're closer than a 16th across. So this piece right here is, you're looking at a close to 50 years right there. Maybe more, if I count them. So that long for the tree to grow that far out. And they must have been an enormous stand. But anyway, I thought someday I'm going to have a use for that. And today is the day. <laughs> I have used it to make some cool picture frames here and there, but I still got a little stash for it. I thought, hey, if I'm going to make a good old, a good old fashioned square, I've got to have some really nice quarter saw material and I'm going to make it a, as a throwback to my days in North Carolina. So I took some of this material and I ripped off the tongue on the, on the bandsaw. You got to watch out for the splinters, man. This is nasty. And uh, then I ripped off the groove and milled it down and I resawed it into three cuts, then ran it through the sander. And voila, I ended up with this stock. I mean, look how beautiful that is. That is just special. This side was near the outside. Some of this stuff, like one piece I cut, I couldn't use it. Because once I ripped it, I don't know if you ever work with this stuff, but it smelled so strong of the pitch pine. Um, it's actually loaded with pitch. And they actually call it fat. Like Pug used to say, that's too fat. Or it's fat wood, like it's, it's got almost like a lot of the terps, like the turpentine smell and the pitch pine. It's really refreshing. Um, it's, it's an essential oil. <laughs> My daughter's into that. If anyone like any essential oils, I could hook you up with an amazing salesperson. Yes. <laughs> but this is... Um, this is refreshing. People, it's the kind of fragrance that when people come into the shop, they go, wow, it smells so good in here. This is just one of the ingredients of all the natural wood oils that I, I try to prepare before you walk in every time you visit. 
But the funny thing, the, not funny, but the thing about this is that trees that die and get, or get cut down, all of the pitch like comes blasting up from the roots and loads the trunk that's sitting there. Or a lot of times the dead tree has, uh, is really fat. And if you are in a pinch or there's, a, there's survival tips where you take out an ax and you find a dead pine or a trunk or something like that that's dead and you trip away the, the waste or the rotten kind of outside and you'll get to this inner heart and you'll smell, you'll start smelling that pitch. The reason you'd want that is to start fires because this stuff is hugely flammable. And you might have seen, bought those sticks that help you start your fires. That's all they're doing. They're taking like dead waste pine that's loaded with pitch and has that turpentine. So it's super flammable. Um, there was a guy down in North Carolina that a friend told me about. We were driving by his house once. He goes, see that barn? He goes, that guy built that entire barn out of pitch pine. So he was like, if that, if that ever went up in flames, I mean, it would ignite. It would probably nearly explode. But that's a nice survival tip. I'll throw that in at no charge for tonight. <laughs> but it, it doesn't make a good square because it's too, like, pitchy. And if you try sanding that in your drum sander, it's going to load the paper so fast you're going to waste, waste it. So what I've done is I've called out the dryer, the nicer non-pitch um, of the quarter sawn hard pine. Southern yellow quality. That's rich quality. Look at this one. I, I should have counted the rings. All right, so I've made like three, I've got three different size um, blades here. And what I did was I jointed one edge so it is really true and straight. And I know it's going to stay straight because of the quarter saw nature of it. Then I ripped it on the table saw and I jointed the other edge, just keeping it very parallel. So I have a very nice parallel blade. And I'm only a quarter inch thick here. And I'm a little less than two inches wide. I mean, there's no, there's no rule for this. But I was trying to be somewhat, somewhat similar to like the, this woodpecker style or even this one. And you've got yourself a decent utility square. Then for the stock, I took another piece that was very nicely quarters on, and I didn't resaw it. So I've got these beautiful chunks that I did the same thing. I dressed them down, and look how thick they are there. They're just about, they're 15 sixteenths. So it's really sweet wood, and I jointed an edge, ripped it, and jointed the other. So we've got very true square stock right here. This one's seven and a half. This one's a little over five. And this is my, this is going to be my largest one for my 18 inch blade here. But all I'm going to do is cut a groove in the top and then slip that in and line it up and we'll be in business. So let's go over to the table saw and we'll rip these and see if we can make it work. Hey, Tom, while you're walking, just like to get your input on this question. Yeah. Mike asked if both sides of the blade of a square are accurate, intended to be accurate. What's that? What? I'm sorry, I missed if the question. You can use both sides of the blade of yeah. the square. Yeah. Are they intended to be equally accurate? Are they? Yes. You're a, good, a good square will absolutely be dead on inside and out. It really should be. I mean, when you're making a handmade one like this, a lot of that depends on the parallel nature of the wood, the stability of it, which we're trying to do our best with, and, um, and then once you set it up. So I brought one sample piece over with me because I, I have the luxury of using a drum sander that, um, I forget the brand. Whatever. It's about, a, uh, it, it's, a, somebody always asks me, I think, but let me just give you the brand of that drum sander. Um, what a beautiful view. <laughs> it's the 1632 Supermax drum sander. They also make a 1938, but 
What do you mean, beautiful view of the back? <laughs> <laughs> you walk away, it leaves this. Oh, sorry. I know, I'm trying to cover up all the crap Limps. back there. But uh, it's, uh, I've, I've got stuff going on. It's a studio. That's right, it's a studio. So what I want to do now is cut a groove in here to a certain depth, but I want, so I want this to slip in there, right in the middle, and I'm going to have it come in at the end here, and when I set the blade, I'll have it just inside a little, so I'm referencing off the stock when I'm checking square in this way. Now, I want that to drop in the groove and not go all the way in so I can use the top edge of the blade. So what I did was I raised the blade up, you can see this, so that I'm going to cut a groove but leave about 5 sixteenths exposed. And that will be good. Now I have, I've got my um, cross cut, I'm sorry, my, uh, my tenoning jig on my table saw. Fits right over the fence. This I use a lot. You've seen it many times if you watch a few mortise and tenon projects because I always use it to cut the cheeks on the tenons. <coughs> But um, for, it's also useful for other things like this because I can more safely bring this in. Let me get a, make sure I got a good end. They're both nice. <laughs> Doesn't matter really. Uh, but that goes down and that's nice and square on the end. So this is going to go down and I set it up to be just off the center. And so I'm going to make one cut this direction then turn it around and make another cut in this direction. Now I think it's set up, I did a quick test of it before you showed up and I'm going to fit it into the groove. We'll see if it works. If so, we'll run all three of them and then we'll go ahead and put together some squares. Let's check it out. Turn on the dust collector. Here we go. Let's head back to the bench. Okay. So let's start small. We'll start with the uh, seven and a half inch and get the hang of it. And boy, that fits nicely in there. But remember, you want it set the blade so that it's a little bit forward of the stock so you can check square in this direction. 
Now I'm going to seat it in on the mortise all the way to the bottom, and but that's not necessarily square. So I'm going to use my square here. Now I'm going to, I want to, this is sliding around, so I'm going to actually clamp that to the bench. I got to get some of my squares out of the way. Get squared away. <laughs> ba -dum -bum. Yes. Very good. <laughs> I think you what? you you have some missed opportunities, my friend. Oh, with with puns? Yes. I know I I was trying to back off a little um, you know. I want to be too annoying. Uh I want to be on the straight and narrow tonight. All right, so. Hmm. All right, I think the I think the Huey Lewis song was enough. <laughs> <laughs> that covered me pretty much no, for all weirdness for one night. All right, so we're gonna go right here, and I've set that that spine uh, a little off, so I'm right on the straight edge here. So let's do this thing. I got my my 5 8 um, brad nailer here. It's the 18 gauge. I just want it a little heavier. So I'm not going far in there. It's just going to spike in. And I'll put maybe four on each side. So that'll get me. I should have enough there to do the three of them. And I'm going to also spread a little glue in there. But isn't that cute? Man, it looks sweet. I should sell these things. Oh, I'm a little bit rough right there. I think I'm going to put that on the outside. Did you put a little finish? I'm asking this. Did you put some finish on that? No. Oh, there's, there's no finish. Hmm. It got burnished a little because um, I set it a little too hard. And there's, it's not a fat piece, but what will happen is you'll notice how it'll start to burn a line on there if you set it too high, heavy. And if it's fat wood, it's going to clog the paper. And basically, this pearl is going to be grinding a polished spot right down the whole center. So let me get the glue. Let's see. Here we go. And I'll need a little stick. And this is all there is to it. I'm going to set it up and just put a little, little glue in there. Yeah, there's a little glue right there. Like that little birdie. <laughs> Whoops. I've been noticing Bob Ross is making quite the comeback on public television. <laughs> He's all over the place. Whoops. I think I put too much glue. Sorry about that, Bob. Got a little too much glue there on the brush. I'm going to take it back. There we go. Now what do I do with this? Oh, I'll put it right there. All right, so this is going to be the outside. And I'm going to set this. Gosh, what a mess. Next one I'm going to do a little better. See, that's why I started with the small one. All right, that's not going to actually cause a problem. Now I want to get this. I'm going to definitely get squeeze out here. I'm going to set this in. And I'm going to set it. So I'm just in a little bit from that end. There we go. You know what? I got to get my glue rag, my famous glue bucket. Yes. Thanks again to Dean. If you want to live large and have a glue bucket like this, <laughs> we actually have them on our website. Um, let's see. Got to get that off there. I don't like, I'm going to go lighter in the glue next time. I'm using the nails anyway, so. All right, now we've got to get it square before that glue sets up. So I come in. Boy, that looks pretty close. So you can just flex it a little bit so I can see that it's laying dead flat on that thing. See that? Boom. Let's do it the other side. Might have to get a little further on. Here, I need your light. Oh, wait. I have this light. 
Man, that looks dead on. Dead nuts, as you guys keep telling me. Wow. I'm happy with that. That's a nice little square. Look at that. Now, I probably wouldn't even have to put the nails in there. But you know me. I'm going to. And I'm going to put a little clamp on there first just to hold it really, get a really good bite on it to get the first couple in. So let's do this. It's not going to move now. I'm going to put a couple right here. Uh, it makes it look so... You know what? It's almost better not to put them in because um, it looks so pretty there a minute ago. Maybe I'll go out on the next ones. All right. I don't want to shoot toward myself. I know you were thinking that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Even I was thinking. <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing? I'm going to have big issues. All right. So I've got those two in or four in. Now I'll go put a couple more. Let's do them in a decorative square. Oh yeah. Now that I'm I'm crazy this is crazy. That's gonna be pretty handy. Keep over by the you are by easy the joiner. To please, my friend. <laughs> oh, there's something about that. I mean look at that. That has a story. This is from Alabama. That wood is like over a hundred years old. This was late eighteen that house had to be built in the in the eighteen hundreds, late eighteen hundreds. So it's crazy. So let's make another one. Now we're going to get really fast. <laughs> so you could really have some fun with this. I've got these other two. I'm going to get some glue on this one. I'm going to go a little lighter here. Don't need that much, Tom. Just go easy. Whoops. <laughs> Do you have any square nails, Slub. Tom? Uh, no. What do you mean, like? I think they're kidding. They're suggesting maybe square nails instead. Oh. Well, Sometimes I don't know if you guys are joking, because I don't know everything that's available out there. Well, there are square. I do have square uh, flooring nails, uh, cut nails, you know. But the, actually, the, the brad, I mean, the, the brad nailer does leave like a, Kind of a rectangular hole, but I think I'm just going to have to live with the nail. Let's see. Maybe this one <laughs> will not use them. All right, so that blade looks awesome. I'm going to go ahead and get this one set in. Same way. I should have test fit it first, but look at that. It goes like butter. This one's a little, little touch touch looser, maybe because, do I have a snipe there? I think I'm using the snipey end. I'm going to change that. I don't know. Get the glue off. Yeah, very slight snipe there. So this was the end that went through the uh, sander. It was just a little bit looser. I'm going to use the other end. No harm. Maybe some square pegs, Michael's suggesting. Yeah, square pegs. That would be up here, Allie. Or none at all, you know, if you don't have to. But, yeah, they, they really do need to be held in place. Um, but, yeah, it's a good idea. You could put it right on the hollow chisel mortiser and come in. And uh, if I wanted to get fussy with it. Could you pin them with brass rods after the glue dries? Yeah, sure. Rick's asking it's a good idea, Rick. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna. You guys are with me on this. I think you must have hurt. See me nail that. So these, I'm gonna be. I'll do something different. And um, I don't have. I don't think I have any. Whoa. Would this it fits better though. Be ideal to let the glue dry and then. Yes. Act? Okay, Steve's. Thinking yes, about Steve. You. Good, good thinking. In fact, I'll throw a little clamp on there, and then worry about hitting them later. 
But look at that. I'm going to oil these up after. I am easy to please. <laughs> this wood, though, makes it, though, doesn't it? Look how clean and linear that is. It looks super accurate. So surprised, actually. All right, so this one's a little out of square. So I'm going to just adjust. Let's make sure we're fully seated here. That feels good. Got a little more squeeze out there. All right. Come up. Oh, yeah, we're out of square with that one. So we're just going to pull that over. So how, what are you doing right there? I'm adjusting it to be square with the spine. This is what's truing. This spine is dead square to this edge from my three-cut method, cross-cut sled. So I'm using that to, to set it. Look how accurate that is. Then I'll flip. And was it Mike who asked about the inside edge? Yes, Mike. Boom. So mind. let's check the inside. Look at that. Spot on. Spot on. Let's try this one. Boom. <laughs> Annoying. Let's just. All right, so you really want to make sure you're really good. And then when it's spot on, you're ready to put a clamp edge on there. I'm going to use one of these square Bessies. That'll give me more surface bite on here. Oh, yeah. I'm even getting some squeeze out there. That's awesome. So... I'm gonna hit that and let's set up the last one. This is the, the king of all three. This is the 18 inch. This is like the, the big one that I used. So let me see if I got any snipes on this one before I, I should just check it. That ends pretty good. Yeah, that end fits a little better. I'll use that. Okay, so here we go. A little more glueage. And here we go. So, who's going to make one of these? Is anybody? <laughs> been some chatter about Christmas gift ideas. It's crazy. These, these actually. They do have. Ideas about brass, adding some brass pins. Yeah, uh, brass pins would be sweet. You could just screws. drill, right, and um, and then set it and sand them flush. Brass would be wonderful. Yeah, maybe just screws would work as well. So if you look at some of these, you can see they inlaid this little brass piece with some pins to make it decorative on both sides, and that's an older. It's an older guy there, so. And I'm going to go ahead. Here now we're ready to set the blade on the big one. That's nice. Set it inside just a little bit. That's it. Good. Oh man, I'm getting some squeeze out there. So this is my 18 inch one. But uh, I mean, you can't really count on these <laughs> quite the same as the metal, but they sure are pretty. And imagine if all your tools <laughs> were made of wood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a woodworker. Check out my tool cabinet. You open the doors and everything's wood. It's like there was a time. Yeah, you have to be resourceful, right? So I'm coming up, and I am not correct right here. See how I'm about I'm over a good sixteenth open down here. So I'm just going to slightly bend. Oops. And get it. Whoa, that looks dead nuts right there. 
How about it? Boom. Same one over here. I need, oh, I can't see with that light on that side. You don't need to come. Kind of, I'll get it here. So this is the critical time, right? Look so, at that. Wow. I love it. Thomas. So this is pretty reassuring. Yeah? Is there a way, uh, Kay's asking, is there a way to true up your old squares that were shown earlier? Oh, gosh. I, you know, I've never done that. I know that with, with framing squares, there was an old method if, you know, those metal, where if you used a, um, a nail set out on the corner, it would flex it in or in, inside the corner. You just drive the pin and it would flex the steel. I'm sure there is, like, you'd have to have some kind of precise way to, to file or surface this edge, you know, on sandpaper or something. But how are you going to hold it so you don't round it slightly? You know, and then you'd have to check it against a trustworthy reference that you know is true and square. And the beauty about, like I said, making that three-cut method cross-cut sled you don't have to have a dead on square with that method. The method cancels the, the requirement to have a square because you're using another method of testing. So. I have another question. Um, Stuart's asking, is there a standard measurement for the stock versus the blade? Um, um, not that I know of, Stuart. I just kind of took some that I had here and said, okay, that looks pretty good. But the longer the blade, you know, it seems like it's almost twice as long. So the amount of the stock here is about, it's 11 to 18. That's actually 18 and a half overall. And uh, this little guy is just like five and a quarter by seven and a half. So you know, it's about two-thirds close-ish, a um, little less. Is and there, um, Michelle's asking, is there any concern about wooden squares moving out? Um, I'm sure. <laughs> of square over time? I'm sure they do. Uh, well, yeah, the wood can, can deflect. That's why we're so fussy about our choice of wood grain and why we're using this quarter song. That's the most stable cut. And having it be old growth is pretty sweet too. But you know, the thing is, when you're, if it's out, you could always, you know, set it, clamp it in a vise, and you could hand plane a shot, and then if you could test it back again. The only problem is you're not going to be able to hand plane the inside edge. So, yeah, kind of a problem. That's why that other one was had screws on it. But, yeah, that's all I... That's the best answer I got for that, Michelle. But does someone else know? <laughs> I think I think it's gonna move, just like that wooden one I showed you. I'm sure it was nice to begin with, but this is a nice way to, you know, if you have some kind of utility thing that doesn't necessarily have to be absolutely perfect. We're we're trying to make it so, just because we can. Um, but over the long haul. You're really going to want a metal one to be trustworthy. All right. Isn't that cool? So we made three easy peasy wood squares. Now, there's one last thing I just want to show you that I got inspired to do when I was building these and just getting ready like a couple hours ago. Um, throw my pot. So I've got... I've got this drawing table that I use to make my scale drawings that some of you have seen before. Get this out of the way. And it's right here. So I picked this up a few years ago and it's nice enough and but I've kind of it's gotten broken this broke I epoxied it back on you know this foot is missing it's 
It's pretty nice though because it's it's relatively accurate in this little Gosh, what do you call this? It's like a miniature drafting table, but this is the cross, so the horizontal bar that stays pretty true. And you want it to be, you set up your paper on there, and then you start out with your line, and you use the other squares to do your drafting to get your verticals this way. So I'm always making scaled drawings to things before I commit to a full-size drawing or as you've seen before, sometimes we'll take our scale drawing and create a model right from that drawing. But some people have asked me, "How did, where'd you get that table? Uh, I can't remember, it was probably at like Staples or something like that years ago, but it's 24 by 18. And I thought, hey, while I'm making these cool squares, why not make a T-square for my table? Because that's essentially what that other, let me see that old square, there it is. This old T-square would be used for something like this and you could use it to draw. The only thing I don't like is that it's only got a single stock. So when you slide it up, you have to make sure you're tight every time before you would commit to a line vertically. You know, you wouldn't want to drift off like that. So I got to thinking be cool to make another one like this and with the the stock of the head like that even saw it with some decorative shape and fix that on this end and then take another one and fix it on the other end and if you know your sides are parallel then it will travel up and down you can just lift it off you could create a slight taper so it'd be easy to place on and you could actually make your own table it could lay flat and it could be on MDF. So you wouldn't need anything fancy like this. So that's what I'm, I've got going over here. I've got, here's my, here's my MDF square. And this is absolutely square. It's, these sides are dead parallel. It's 24 by 18. And I've got a special blade I made for this. So this is the this is the same material, the quarter sawn um, heart pine or yellow pine. But before I sawed it up, I glued some maple, hard maple to each side. Because I thought if I'm going to draw on this a lot, I want to know that edge is going to hold up against a pencil. You know, the, the pine has that softer grain. And when you're on the that would basically, that edge would be flat sawn, so you might be in the softer, whiter color. So by doing that, I've created a really nice marking line here, and then I just milled up some of the other part of the same stock to less, it's about 5 eighths thick, so it's gonna fit right under there. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'll trace off something like this head, maybe a little wider, and saw that out. And I'll go ahead and get this square like I just did. I'll square it up, but this time I'm gonna have it on both sides. And I'll clamp it up and glue it and do the, maybe the brass pins. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna go that crazy. And then I'll put a second head like this on the other end using the same material. So then I'll have this, it'll travel parallel on this table and I can just lift it off for it to catch, get back on top of the paper. So this is a good way for you to make your own if you wanted to make a little board like this. It's super simple, just 18 by 24 and you can just make a, make a nice straight edge. You can use whatever nice quarter sawn stock you have. If you have quarter sawn maple, just make it out of that. You won't have to do this. Um, that would be awesome. So I'm thinking this, I might want this a little heavier. I might put a little beam on top of it. And then I could use that to move it as well and trace off of it. There you go. A bonus project for you to work on in addition to your funky little squares. <laughs> Any other questions?
No more questions. All right. Well, thank you so much for hanging around with me. I hope you got an appreciation of how easy it is to get square if you really want to be square. <laughs> and it's hip to be square. <laughs> no, it's, it's good. It's, it's nice to have nice tools, but this is a fun little project. Boy, this would be a great in a kid's toolbox too, wouldn't it? You could make your kids like little um, hammers and squares. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you might make it so nice that you'd be grabbing tools out of his toolbox. And, or her. Or hers. Yeah. yeah. Of course. I will uh, have Tom. He always reads the chat after. So there's lots of things that people have shared ideas so that you won't miss those. Nice. Um, so. Yeah, I love reading the chat after. Yeah. Well, thank you once again for hanging out with us in the shop for a little while tonight. And we look forward to meeting you here again next time here in the shop in Canterbury, New Hampshire, right back here on Thursday night for Shop Night Live. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, friends. Great to be together. Thank you for all your participation. I am so square now, I can't believe it. <laughs>